David Foster Wallace is a novelist and an essayist, not a mathematician. In fact, he once received a D in calculus. But in his new book, Everything and More, A Compact History of Infinity, David walks you through the mind-blowing world of infinity and the abstract thinking needed to conceive it. He joins us now from the studios of member station KPCC in Pasadena, California. And welcome to Talk of the Nation. Thank you. Uh, let's start with the idea of uh, a lot of what you're writing about, of course, is the history of mathematics and, and, in a way, the history of abstract thought. And both of them are contained in the problem of how you go from counting five oranges to getting to the number five. Explain that to us. Oh, gosh. The thing in the book, I think, has to do with first grade math. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is that mathematics is concerned entirely with, with, with abstract stuff. Um, that is, when you're talking about the number five, you're talking about five really of anything, no particular things. It, it, it turns out that it's this that makes math difficult for little kids, at least some little kids, to learn. And it, it's a bit of a mind bender even for us. So it's easy to go from uh, five oranges and you take away two oranges and you're left with three oranges to five minus three equals two. Yeah. I mean, the first is a particular case, and the second is a theorem, meaning a mathematical abstraction that's true in all cases. Uh, math is interested pretty much exclusively in the latter, and it's the latter that's really weird if you, if you start thinking about it. And speaking of weird, then we get uh, to infinities. Where does it first come up in the history of mathematics, and, and how was it first described? Oy. Uh, probably you can blame everything um, on the Greeks. Uh, which is usually the case with most of this stuff. I think it, one of the tricky things is that the Greeks don't have a whole lot of distinction between mathematics and metaphysics. Um, I think it first appears metaphysically in the work of Anaximander, who's one of the pre-Socratics. Um, what's interesting is that the Greek's word for infinity, which was, uh, which is to aperon, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, was also their word for mess or disorder. Hmm. And if you think about Genesis's um, the universe before creation was without w was without limit, form, and void. Um, that's that's more or less the idea. In math, it pretty much starts with the paradoxes of Zeno, um, who was a contemporary of Socrates and a big student of Parmenides. And a lot of people know Zeno's um, Achilles and the Tortoise. Mm -hmm. um, well, the paradox of Zeno that you write about, and this is uh, uh, briefly, if, you are, if you're crossing the street, well, first you have to get halfway across, and, and from there you have to, have to get half, and you can keep dividing that half and half and half and half and half, and of course, uh, theoretically, then you never get to the other side. That, you put it much better than I could have. <laughs> I doubt that very much. Uh, and that's the first paradox. And interestingly, you write that Zeno may not have known about it, but what he was describing, actually, uh, was motion, and he didn't have the math to describe it. Well, here's what's weird. is Z Zeno really did think he was talking about motion. He was a Parmenidean, and Parmenides had a really kind of weird metaphysics that, that implied that motion was impossible. So really what Zeno was trying to do was mess with people's heads and show that motion was impossible. That is, you can't leave the room because before you leave the room, you've got to get halfway out and, and on and on and on. What he was really introducing was the very tricky idea of how to deal with how to deal with infinite quantities, both in natural language and in math. And um, Aristotle, in particular, spends a whole lot of time in both the metaphysics and the physics trying to sort of talk about infinity in such a way as to sort of diffuse the more pernicious parts of Zeno's paradox. And that makes any sense or not. Zeno's paradox, of course, is based on the uh, sort of, you know, we think of infinity as, you know, this unbelievably huge number, but of course it's also an unbelievably small number. Uh, that, that half keeps is infinitely divisible. Well, there, see, th this is why this stuff's hard to talk about on the radio. There's, there's all these sorts of tiny little distinctions. There are tiny infinities um, in the form of infinitesimals, which you can think of as sort of one over infinity, which gets used a lot in the early calculus in the 1600s. What most people who've had a lot of math will tell you that what Zeno's paradoxes really con um, concern are things called infinite series, um, which in, in modern analysis we know can have a finite sum. But how exactly you prove mathematically that an, that an infinite series can have a finite sum, is it's part of what the book's concerned with. And the method of exhaustion is, it's basically um, a, a, an early, early form of integral calc. Um, and it does involve, it, it involves infinity at least in the terms of, um, uh, let's see, 
you can basically come arbitrarily closely to an infinite-sided polygon, which is the way you would um, approximate a curve with a regular geometric polygonal form. David Foster Wallace, uh, you're a novelist, uh, not a textbook writer. You never even did well in math. How did you get interested in writing about this, you know, high-level stuff? Well, number one, this is not a textbook, and I, I wince at the idea that there are mathematicians in the audience because I'm by no means an expert. Um, uh, r really, I got into this as an exercise in something called technical writing, which is a kind of nonfiction where you're trying to take really abstract or technical stuff and make it clear and even pretty. Um, this is part of a series put out by the same outfit that did the Penguin Lives a few years ago, and um, their idea was to get people who weren't scientists and mathematicians to write about some of this stuff, but, but ideally the authors had at least a little of the stuff in their background, so they weren't like starting from zero, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, and, and I had had a bit of this stuff in college. David Foster Wallace is the author of numerous books. His newest is Everything and More, A Compact History of Infinity. He was with us. Uh, of course, he's also the author of the novel Infinite Jest, which uh, works out nicely. He was with us from the studios of member station KPCC in Pasadena, California.